My name is uh, Gary Matthews. I'm Director of Astronomy Systems at Excellus. Um, Excellus may not be familiar to many of you. It's, a, it's really a long evolution, uh, starting with both uh, Eastman Kodak in Rochester, New York, and, and uh, the weather systems that uh, came out of Fort Wayne, Indiana from ITT. ITT acquired uh, the Kodak division that makes uh, large optical systems in 2004. Uh, as a large conglomerate, and then in, 2000, uh, in 2011, um, they split up that company and we became uh, Excellus. So it's, uh, it's a long history of weather systems, uh, kind of since uh, tracking weather from space uh, was started back in the, in the late 50s. Uh, so the pictures that you see on your evening news uh, or on Google Earth, uh, mainly come from, uh, uh, from ITT Excellus. Um, the pictures certainly on, on, uh, that come from space on Google Earth uh, come from payloads that we build and then the uh, pictures of all the clouds, et cetera, that you see uh, also come from payloads that we build for uh, NASA. So we started making mirrors a long time ago. Uh, they've certainly uh, transformed over time. They used to be very heavy. Uh, we built the backup mirror for Hubble, for example, that's sitting down in the Smithsonian. A very, very heavy mirror uh, by today's standards. Um, we've evolved, so to speak, uh, using new technology and new techniques. Um, that, that mirror could be made uh, many times lighter. Uh, it's about 160 kilograms per square meter. Uh, we could make that same mirror for probably in the order of uh, 45 kilograms per square meter today. That allows larger systems to be made. It allows uh, more flexible systems to be made. Um, and all those things kind of roll into you know, where we're moving in the future, which is some technology we're working on to uh, enable, say, a four meter monolithic system to be launched that would really replace Hubble and be able to do uh, some very interesting planet finding. We're working technology to allow, say, a four-meter monolithic system to be made that, that could do coronagraph uh, exoplanet uh, finding missions. Um, so uh, ultra stability. Uh, so you know, what are the materials, the material parameters that will allow those kinds of uh, uh, missions to be successful? Wrapping around that, say, the thermal uh, thermal parameters that would be uh, necessary to enable those missions. Uh, so just because you have a, a uh, material that is thermally stable, for example, if you don't wrap that around, say, a, a, a very robust thermal control system, it won't perform you know, as required. So it really comes down to a system approach. Uh, the, the, the primary mirror is really just maybe one small part of uh, that whole systems approach to enable these uh, future missions to be successful. The NRO telescopes, the donated telescopes, will be turned into a, uh, a, a, a three mirror and a stigmat. So they have a much wider field of view, like uh, you know, 100 times the field of, uh, of Hubble. So they'll be able to do large scale surveys that, that Hubble's not able to do. So it's kind of, even though they're the same size, they're kind of a Hubble on steroids uh, with what we'll be able to do with those systems. So, uh, the first one will be called uh, W-First, um, looking at uh, uh, a survey telescope looking at the, the parameters of, uh, of dark energy. Um, there will also be a chronograph on that, so we'll be able to do some very preliminary uh, planet finding, uh, certainly not to the level that is needed to actually identify an Earth since they're not big enough, but certainly um, will we'll provide us some great input onto the on how a, uh, a, a chronograph will work on orbit uh, and get some you know, much needed uh, uh, technology development in the chronograph area. The telescopes have been sitting around. Um, they're actually, uh, the, the way they're designed, uh, they're, they're very pliable on, on how you could change them. Um, you know, a different tertiary mirror, for example, could change the, the, the field of view, for example. So, um, you know, unlike a rich accretion, um, where the, these donated telescopes will be turned into a, a, a three mirror and a stigmat. There's a lot of knobs, for example, that the optical engineers can use to really create the kind of parameter space that they need you know, for various missions. 
so it, uh, it really adds a, a whole new dimension to, uh, uh, to the, the future exploration. If you go back in Google Earth in time, you can see the, 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 the improvement in quality from those initial Landsat images that are, say, 30 meter resolution to early Iconos to now um, you know, digital globe, uh, uh, GOI, and worldview uh, systems. Iconos uh, was the first one uh, that were uh, digital globe and now uh, GOI and, and uh, worldview. Um, uh, those were specially made for commercial remote sensing, as we call it. Um, the early ones were smaller systems. Iconos is, uh, is 0.75 meters, um, uh, collected imagery at about one meter resolution. Uh, the commercial companies then got uh, a, an additional license to be able to get half meter resolution. So these, uh, the, the new systems are 1.1 meter aperture systems that can uh, collect imagery at, say, a, a half a meter resolution on the ground. We are working on, on uh, next generation uh, weather satellites, GOES ABI. Uh, we're developing the, uh, the imaging system for that. Um, there's, uh, there's still life left in the ones that, uh, that are on orbit. I think there's maybe another one in the barn yet. Um, so uh, there's certainly always potential if you know, there's an on-orbit anomaly that, that uh, you, know, you kind of run out before the, the next generation is ready to go. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think the whole community is working hard to make sure that there is no, you know, real gap, especially in the weather, which is extremely important.